In today's video, I'm gonna give you a full beginner's guide to Wix automations. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to get started and create your first automations, all the way up to the capabilities and some advanced features that you can use it for. So let's get right into the video. Now, the first thing you want to do when you go into Wix is you want to go ahead and go to my sites and click on the site that you want to create the automations for. Now on the left hand side you're going to be able to go all the way to the bottom there's a section here called automations and this is where the automation section is kept. So to get started we're going to go to the top and we're going to click on new automation here and there's a few different things we can do. To start off with we can create an automation from one of their templates and they have quite a few templates for the existing popular things that people might want to do. So for example, send instructions before a session or email visitors to recover abandoned carts, invite customers back via email. There's tons of different flows. So you've got the email flows, you've got the engagement flows, you've got the ret retention flows. There's tons of different flows that you can use inside of here. So have a look at these if there's anything you want to do because you might find that what you want to do is already a pre-made um, automation. If not, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the start from scratch option. And this gives us a lot more flexibility anyway, and I kind of prefer this. So the first thing we need to do up here is call our automation something. So I'm going to call this one test, but I'd keep it organized, name it well if you can do. So for the start here, we're going to have this section called triggers. And triggers are basically what sets off the flow or what triggers this flow. So you can choose an app and a trigger. And the options you've got are price quotas, invoices, Wix stores, site members, pricing plans, Wix bookings, inbox and chat, spaces by Wix, business phone numbers, and segments. There's so much capabilities you can do here. I'm gonna start off by showing you the Wix stores option. And you can see here, once you select an app, it gives you an option for the triggers available for that app. So here we have order placed or checkout abandoned. So th those are the two options for it. If we were to go to price quotas, you could see um, th the triggers here would be price quote expired, price quote accepted, price quote sent. Wix bookings has some more, so sessions booked. You get the idea, each one has different capabilities depending on what you need to do. So let's say we want to set up an automation for the Wix stores section. So let's select the trigger as order placed and we can set the frequency. So do we want it one per contact? Do we want it once every 24 hours or do we want it to trigger every single time? It's really up to you. Now, let's say someone's just ordered. This is going to be triggered now. We probably want to add a bit of a delay. So I'm going to click add delay here and you can click and add a delay depending on how long you want the action to be sent. So we could do one day, we could do hours, we could do minutes. So let's say we want to send it 30 minutes after they place an order. We can also add a condition here. So if, and then we can have a criteria for the automation to continue. So if the um, payment status is paid, if the shopping shipping price value is X, if the total price after tax value is equals or doesn't equal to or is greater than or less than. So we could say it's greater than 30 and it's going to do it in your currency of your store. So that'll be 30 pounds if your store's in pounds. So it's going to say continue the automation if the total price after tax is greater than 30 pound. So maybe you've got a high, maybe you've got like a high value customer list and say above 300 pound you want to add them to that. So this is basically the triggers here and then the next bit after triggers. So the next bit here we have here is the actions. Now the actions are what happens when you uh, send the trigger. So you might want to send them an email, you might want to send them a chat message, you want to create a task, update Google Sheets, connect to Zapier, send webhook, get email, assign a badge, send a coupon, send a push notification, add a label. Now you can add multiple actions as well. So I'll show you what to do now. Let's first of all try the send a webhook option. So if somebody places an order above £300, it's going to send a webhook. Now it's going to ask for the target URL and this really depends on what your what site you're going to send the, the webhook to. So um, if you want to get one from Slack, I've got a tutorial on the channel, but there's tons of different ways to get your webhook URL. But basically you'd post it in there and you can customize the structure if you want or you can use the default structure. If you go ahead to customize structure, you can click that and you can pick the variables um, as, and then the key here will be um, 
what it's called on the site and then you can pick the variables etc so let's click activate on this actually let me put a domain in there first so now i should be able to activate it i've put a fake url in there and it says there's a technical issue um i'm going to activate anyway i think it's probably because i've put the custom structures in so i'm just going to put that to all values okay i'm going to activate anyway sometimes it does say that um, and it's usually fine it's usually like small errors so we can go back into this webhook now we can edit it and we can actually add another action here so one of the actions that I think is really good is the send to Zapier one now it's not actually on here because it would have to be a, like the first one but if you wanted to send a web webhook you could also send another thing here so you could update Google Sheets you could send a push notification. There's tons of different things here. Um, for example, if we send an email, we could uh, write an email here. We could switch up the template. We go ahead and customize this whole thing. We can even do the um, website. And that would basically mean that once they purchase something over 300 pounds, it would send them a custom email depending on, well, yeah, because they've spent that. So we can just save that. I'm just going to close that, um, delete the action, and I'm going to click save. So once you back out of here, you'll be able to see which ones are active. So you can see here this is active, and if you want to deactivate it, you can press the three dots here, you click this, and it's going to make it inactive. So there we go. Now something else I find very, very useful about this is connecting up to Zapier. The reason that I would connect up to Zapier is because it gives you so much flexibility and, and more options of what you can do. So pick the trigger. The triggers need to be the same or you just need to pick a trigger here. So let's say web, let's say someone's ordered something. We can click the connect to Zapier option and I'm going to click activate here. Now I'm going to put a title in. I'm going to put connect to Zapier. I'm going to hit save and it's going to ask me to activate Zapier, but we're going to set something to Zapier so we can click activate anyway. Now that we've activated it, the, this flow, we can go over to Zapier itself and we can go over to the main page here. We can click create and click new Zap. We can go ahead and select the trigger as Wix here. And for event, we can go down to the Wix custom triggers. We can connect up the account here and then we can select a trigger and now we've just created this one called connector Zapier. We can select that as the trigger, hit continue, test trigger and now it means that once somebody places an order which is the trigger we set in here, it's going to send that as a trigger into Zapier and now you can click continue and this gives us a lot more options to um, as for the action so we can send so much more stuff we can connect this to like Clavio if we wanted to we can set this up to Trello if we've got some database we can set this up to some kind of CRM we can set up to Google Sheets, Monday.com, Slack there's so many more options in here than there actually are in Wix automation so I would recommend that you go ahead and connect this up with Zapier you could for example connect up with Google Calendar and every time someone places or someone books a call, you can connect up with your Google Calendar, so it's automatically on there. Zapier really makes the options endless, so I'd recommend trying that. But if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, be sure to like, subscribe, and also comment down below that it helped. Thank you for watching.